Who were these women dancing with such elegance and allure? They are Geiko and Maiko. Geiko and Maiko are part of the Kyoto Tea House tradition of hospitality, a tradition with a history of over 400 years. Behind the glamour, the world of these female entertainers is governed by a strict code, and they work day and night to perfect their art. This young woman has embarked on the path of a Maiko. What is daily life like in her world? On this edition of Begin Japanology, we look at Geiko and Maiko, the geisha of Kyoto, and the art of Japanese hospitality, which they have cultivated over the centuries. Hello and welcome to Begin Japanology. I'm Peter Barakan. Today I'm in the Gion district of Kyoto, which is famous for its traditional geisha entertainment. In fact, it's probably the largest area in Japan which is associated with this form of entertainment. Our theme for today is geisha. That's the general term, although here in Kyoto, they're known as geiko or maiko. Geiko are the fully fledged practitioners of the art. The younger women who are still perfecting their craft are known as maiko. First of all, let's take an introductory look at what geiko and maiko are. Kyoto, Japan's ancient capital. There are parts of the city where you often see kimono-clad women like this at night. These women are geiko and maiko. There are five such traditional geisha districts in Kyoto. Kamishichiken, Pontocho, Gion Higashi, Gion Kobu and Miyagawacho. In Japanese, they're referred to as kagai, literally flower town. The largest of these districts is Gion Kobu. More than 100 Geiko and Maiko live and work in this neighborhood. Every April, an event is held in Gion Kobu that is a highlight of spring in Kyoto. All the Geiko and Maiko gather to dance. A geiko is a woman who has made the art of hospitality her career. A maiko is an apprentice, learning the geiko's trade. Most maiko are under 20 years old. You can tell the difference between geiko and maiko by how they dress. Maiko wear more colourful kimono, and their hair is adorned with large floral ornaments. Their distinctive footwear with its 10 centimetre platform gives them a dainty appearance. Overall, a Maiko's outfit is showy. Geiko wear kimono in more subdued colours and for their hair they use only one or two decorative hairpins. They wear ordinary Japanese sandals, geta or zori. Geiko are more demure in appearance. Geiko and Maiko work in ochaya, tea houses. There are 64 tea houses in Gion Kobu. Let's visit one of them. At a tea house, you are first greeted by the proprietress. She leads you to a banquet room. Simple yet classy, this tatami floored room offers a cozy atmosphere. In the alcove hangs a decorative scroll appropriate to the season. Each thoughtful touch like this helps the guests to escape from everyday life. 
Meals are prepared by specialized caterers who deliver the food quickly to the tea house. The cuisine is called Kyo Kaiseki. Vegetables and tofu are the main ingredients. It's served in a series of courses with impeccable timing. And then the Geiko and Maiko appear. The job of Geiko and Maiko is to create an enjoyable atmosphere. They pour drinks, keep the conversation lively, and basically entertain the guests. They also perform various types of dance to the accompaniment of a shamisen. Geiko and Maiko are called the flowers of Kyoto. They cherish and uphold Japan's ancient traditions of heartfelt hospitality. This is an ochaya, literally a tea house in Gion Kobu, and we've been given special permission to film here today. In my 35 years in Japan, this is the first chance I've had to visit an establishment like this in Kyoto, and I must say I'm quite excited. So let's go in and take a look. The entrance hall here has a number of features of traditional Japanese interior design. For example, look up here at the ceiling. It has woven strips of wood. In addition to the aesthetic qualities of it, it also has the rather interesting aspect of reacting to minute changes in temperature. So when a customer comes in from outside, the proprietress inside knows by the sound that she needs to come out and greet the customer. Tea houses have a long tradition going back centuries, and learning about the culture of tea houses will give you an understanding of a number of different aspects of Japanese culture. Let's take a look. A tea house is a place where Geiko and Maiko entertain guests, and the spirit of hospitality is evident in every aspect of the tea house experience. On this day, the guests include businessmen and shop owners, a wide range of occupations and age groups. I get to socialize with people of different generations, people who come from different backgrounds. It's not often that I get to come to a tea house, but when I am here, it's a chance to enjoy the company of others like this. In Japan, an encounter at a drinking party sometimes develops into a business relationship. Moreover, tea houses are often used as a venue for business negotiations. This imposes a certain rule on Geiko. <laughs> We never tell anyone what we hear at the banquet room. All the business talk, especially, we're well aware that it's strictly confidential stuff, so we never ever tell anyone. Never reveal a secret about a guest. That's rule number one in the world of Geiko and Maiko. Another important thing is appearance. Geiko and Maiko wear distinctive white makeup. They do this because it looks good with the kimono they wear. The younger the Geiko or Maiko, the more red she applies. Finally, lip colour is applied. Their facial appearance is characterised by a strong contrast of black, white and red. 
the choice of kimono is important too. For spring, a vibrant cherry blossom print. In early summer, a cool motif of flowing water. As autumn turns to winter, chrysanthemums and colourful leaves. Geiko and Maiko change their outfits to suit the time of year, so that the guests can enjoy a sense of the season. This too is an aspect of hospitality. Everything they do is for the benefit of their guests. This is the spirit of heartfelt hospitality that has been kept alive through the centuries in Japan. This is a geiko called Kimika. And when I was introduced to her, she gave me this. It's called a Senjafuda in Japanese. It's like a kind of name card. It has her name Kimika on it here and a design with uh, it's a little gold circle here with Kyoto written on it. These very colourful uh, name cards, they're kind of name cards really. And there are hundreds and hundreds of them. Um, how many of these do you yourself have? Uh, I have about 30. And we have different samples um, of all different kinds. Um, some of them are related to the seasons. For, for example, in spring there's some which have cherry blossom designs. There are some which relate, relate to autumn, winter. I have them made with seasonal motifs on them for the enjoyment of our customers. I hope these will serve as a kind of memento. So when they look at them later, they'll remember the time of year when they came here. So I make a lot of these. Uh, do you give out a different card depending on who you're with? Yasaka Jinja, a Shinto shrine in Gion. Across from its gate stands a tea house that has been in business for more than 450 years. It's said that Kyoto's geisha tradition started here. In the 15th and 16th centuries, this shop provided drinking water for visitors to the shrine. In time, women were employed to offer tea and sweets to welcome its guests. Eventually, these women also began to dance and play the shamisen in banquet rooms. They came to be called geiko. Kyoto flourished as Japan's political and cultural hub for many centuries. Many aristocrats, samurai, merchants and others held important political and trade discussions in Kyoto. It was in this milieu that the ironclad code of secrecy of the tea houses became established. The culture of the tea house was boosted further in the mid 19th century when Japan was rocked by uprisings against the shogun's rule. Kyoto seethed with political intrigue and assassinations were common. Anti-shogun conspirator Katsura Kogoro and his associates would often visit tea houses to discuss their plans to establish a new Japanese government and society. This demanded the utmost secrecy. Gion was perfect for conspiracy, a warren of narrow streets where a man could easily elude pursuers. Tea houses were almost unmarked, making it hard to track someone down at night. A certain incident epitomized the tea house's iron-clad code of secrecy. One night, an agent of the shogun came to a tea house seeking Katsura. Where is Katsura? He asked a geiko. But no matter how much he tried to intimidate the woman, whose name was Ikumatsu, she didn't breathe a word and continued to dance. Eventually, the agent gave up and left. Her. 
Katsura had in the meantime escaped from the tea house through a secret passage. Ikumatsu went on to help Katsura on many occasions, and eventually they married. Katsura changed his name to Kido Takayoshi. He later served as the Home Affairs Minister in Japan's new government. A geiko would die before revealing a customer's secrets. This heartfelt dedication to the guest won geiko an impressive reputation that became known even abroad. From the mid-19th century, Japan modernized and opened to the world. Many foreigners came to Kyoto and visited its tea houses. Yuki had mastered the art of hospitality. She knew how to be hospitable and how to make people happy. I think that Morgan was particularly enamored of her hospitality. The art of hospitality, cultivated and perfected over centuries, is still alive and well in Japan even today. Being entertained by a geiko is just as much fun for us non-Japanese as it is for the Japanese. And many foreign visitors especially enjoy the games that are played in tea houses. Many of the games are designed so that even a first-time visitor can take part with ease and it's part of the Geiko and Maiko's efforts to make sure that every visitor is put at their ease. One especially popular game involves drinking. It's called Kompira Fune Fune and the Geiko or Maiko and the guest uh, follow a simple routine to music and whoever loses the game has to take a drink. Can't be bad, can it? I have a Maiko here with me called Sayaka and she's going to demonstrate how the game is played. The rules are simple. Two players take turns touching the dish in rhythm to the music. If one decides to pick up the dish, the other has to touch the table with his or her fist. The first person to make an incorrect response loses. I know you think I'm losing on purpose. I'm not. <laughs> Geiko in training, Maiko entertain their guests with a broad repertoire of performances. What is daily life like for Maiko? Sayaka is a Maiko currently in training to become a full-fledged Geiko. She lives in a house with a proprietress and other Maiko. Maiko live in houses like this and receive commissions from tea houses to work there.
At home, they practice their routines. Dancing is one of the most important elements of a Maiko's repertoire. Sayaka is originally from Saitama, far from Kyoto. After graduating from middle school, she left her parents' home at the age of 15 to come to Gion. I liked classical Japanese dance to begin with, and I was taking lessons. Then, in the final year of middle school, we had a school trip, during which we had a chance to see Maiko. I learned then that there are people who do this for a living. I decided that I wanted to become a Maiko myself, so I came here. Since coming to Kyoto, she has followed a rigorous daily routine. In the evening, she entertains customers, and during the day, she has a series of lessons. This is how she was three years ago, when she had just started as a Maiko. The girls receive detailed instruction from a teacher renowned for strictness. Pull in! Are you listening? You must be careful with your posture. Your bottom's sticking out. Along with dance, Sayaka studies various other traditional arts and cultural practices, including the shamisen and the tea ceremony. Day after day, she has so much to learn, but she's tough, and she has come this far. There's just so much to learn. So life is really busy. Living with the proprietress allows her to learn not just the arts and cultural practices, but also the fundamentals of being a maiko, everything from deportment to appearance. Today, she's learning how to fix her hair. It should sweep outwards in this area. That makes it look more attractive. Not just seen from the front, but from the side and behind, too. Practice so that you look good from every angle. Because they live together, the proprietress can point out certain things that she otherwise wouldn't be able to. I can teach them how to speak properly, how to behave properly, and how to stand and walk properly. And also, they learn how to cooperate with others. They begin to show consideration for others in a way they couldn't before. For instance, when someone is carrying something heavy, someone else will naturally help her out. The mindset of a Maiko is reflected in the item she carries with her. Inside her handbag is the fan she uses for dancing, a mirror in which she can check her appearance at any moment, a comb, and other items related to a Maiko's job. But what's missing? Something almost everyone else carries. Mobile phones are not allowed. They don't suit the image of a Maiko. They are forbidden. In Kyoto, all my friends are other Maiko anyway, so none of them have a mobile phone either. I communicate with my parents strictly by writing letters. I really do. She only gets two days off a month. Sometimes lessons and work keep her busy throughout the entire day, from early morning to late at night. Between lessons, she enjoys a quick trip to a coffee shop, a brief chance to relax. Don't you want to go out and have fun? Well, let's see. I have so many enjoyable conversations with lots of different people when I'm at a tea house. That's good enough for me, so I'm okay. 
The proprietor of the coffee shop has watched Sayaka as she has matured as a Michael. Compared to when I first met her, at her lessons and whatnot, her demeanor and manner of speaking to people has reached a completely different level. Now she's usually able to put herself in the guest's shoes, and that helps her conversation. In fact, I suppose that's what enables a Maiko to provide such warm hospitality. Sayaka is 19 years old. Next year, she'll become a geiko. After four years of training, Sayaka is nearly ready. Soon, Kyoto will have another full-fledged geiko. When Maiko reached the age of about 20, a lot of them feel like they need to make a decision on whether they're going to press on to become a full-fledged geiko or whether they're going to give up and go back to a regular life, as it were. It's a vocation which is a lot more demanding than many people might realize. But even so, in this modern 21st century age, it's perhaps a little surprising that there are girls from all over Japan who, just like Sayaka, come to Kyoto and enter this world of the maiko and geiko. Well, Sayaka, thank you very much for being with us today. It's been a pleasure. There's still the little matter of the bill, which I haven't settled up yet, but Kyoto tea houses have their own customs. You don't pay cash on the spot, they send the bill later. Of course, that doesn't work with first-time customers, but with their regulars, there's a bond of trust. It must be a nice position to be in. Although the trip from Tokyo could be a little bit demanding, I think. I'll see you again next time. Which is famous for its traditional geisha entertainment. In fact, it's probably the largest area in Japan which is associated with this form of entertainment. Our theme for today is geisha. That's the general term. Although here in Kyoto, they're known as geiko or maiko. Geiko are the fully-fledged practitioners of the art. The younger women who are still perfecting their craft are known as maiko. First of all, let's take an introductory look at what geiko and maiko are. Kyoto, Japan's ancient capital. There are parts of the city where you... Every April, an event is held in Gion Korbu that is a highlight of spring in Kyoto. All the Geiko and Maiko gather to dance. A Geiko is a woman who has made the art of hospitality her career. A Maiko is an apprentice, learning the Geiko's trade. Most Maiko are under 20 years. Often see kimono-clad women like this at night. These women are geiko and maiko. There are five such traditional geisha districts in Kyoto. Kamishichiken, Pontocho, Gion Higashi, Gion Kobu, and Miyagawacho. In Japanese, they're referred to as kagai, literally flower town. The largest of these districts is Gion Kobu. More than 100 geiko and maiko live and work in this neighborhood. A woman has embarked on the path of a maiko. What is daily life like in her world? On this edition of Begin Japanology, we look at geiko and maiko, the geisha of Kyoto, and the art of Japanese hospitality, which they have cultivated over the centuries. Hello and welcome to Begin Japanology. I'm Peter Barakan. Today I'm in the Gion district of Kyoto. Who are these women dancing with such elegance and allure? They are Geiko and Maiko. Geiko and Maiko are part of the Kyoto tea house tradition of hospitality, a tradition with a history of over 400 years. 
Behind the glamour, the world of these female entertainers is governed by a strict code, and they work day and night to perfect their art. This young woman